Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. And this, well, this is the big one. The franchise mode deep dive is here for NHL 25. A little bit delayed, but I might argue better late than never. Throughout this video, I'm going to be talking about everything that this video encompasses in regards to franchise mode. Of course, my main mode when it comes to the EA NHL series. If you would like to watch this trailer without me talking over all of it, pausing every five seconds, there should be a link in the description. Or, of course, you can just head over to EA NHL's YouTube channel. And aside from that, I'm so excited to talk about some of this stuff. Now, look. I know for some people it's going to be like, no GM connected, man, whatever, I'm out. My standpoint on GM connected has been this. Um, based on the failure that that mode ultimately was, I loved that mode with all my heart. But ultimately, it was a failure, in my opinion, primarily due to the technology at the time and the fact that the loading screens took for goddamn ever, took forever to do anything. I think ultimately, though, if they can get franchise mode into a better spot, have that stability of modern loading times on these newer consoles, I think it has a better chance to stick around. And while it might not be everything that everyone's wanted, I think for someone to be like, NHL 25 franchise mode isn't better, I think you'd be fooling yourselves, right? Like, I've been pretty lukewarm, if not outright pessimistic, when it comes to some of the gameplay stuff that they talked about so far. This is the video where I'm going to let some of that excitement shine through. Now, I'm not going to sit here... Uh, and talk over Gurn as much as I could. Um, Lord knows I've talked uh, <laughs> I've talked Gurn's ear off enough <laughs> in a one-on-one -on -one setting as it is. Um, but this is one of the names to remember, and arguably the primary name to remember when it comes to franchise mode and the whole idea of like, oh, do the people working on the game actually care? I promise you, Gurn does care. I promise you that. It's just a matter of whether or not the resources and the time are allocated to franchise mode in any given year. Thankfully, this is one of the years where it happened to be. And that brings us immediately to the new home screen. Now, we'll get a look at it uh, in a little bit different of a way because they kind of cover every little thing that's been added here. But this is the new hub screen when you load into franchise mode. And of course... There's a lot to look at that he covers as he talks through this. And um, obviously, I mean, there's there's a lot to look at, right? Basically, every bit of information you could want is there. Top right-hand corner, you hit the Y button. Box scores are in the game. You can finally go back and look. I know. I know. They should have been in there 20 fucking years ago. I know. But at least they're there now, right? I'll take what I can get. It should have been there 20 years ago. It's here now. You can look at box scores and stuff like that. Of course, on an Xbox controller, it'd be the X button to switch over to the calendar screen. That's all the same. Uh, but of course, all the stats that are there, the projected goaltenders, the matchup stats. And of course, it's hidden right now by the webcam. Let me do this. But if you use the triggers, it'll give you different stats, whether it be the leading scorers right now, the top goaltenders, all of the stuff like that that you could want. And then the primary thing to look at here as this scrolls through is you can see on the left-hand side, he's utilizing the left and right bumper, the shoulder buttons, to quickly, I didn't think it would take that long, to quickly scroll through that little menu that you have on the left-hand side. Of course, the bottom one being settings, um, but you may have noticed, and let me see if I can go back here, he may show a bunch of this stuff off, uh, but you notice here, trade and improve, obviously, everything that you would expect to see. The next tab, your edit lines, your roster moves, then the conversation tab, which I know he goes into a bit more detail later on. Um, the whole idea of this refresh is to be able to spend as little time in the menus as possible in terms of going from point A to point B. Their target was to set it up as a much more fluid experience to be able to get to where you want to go instead of clicking through a thousand menus to do something. And even if it was only like two or three button clicks, oftentimes it could feel uh, like so goddamn many. <laughs> Let's be honest. Um, so again, he goes into further detail about what's there in terms of all of the different quick links that are available. Mentions, of course, the projected goalies, the matchup there, I would imagine. And indeed, there I'll disappear for a second. As you can see, scrolling through the standings, 
individual team leaders. You'll get a league leader tab as well. And of course, can click R3 to go to that individual screen on its own. But you get the point leaders. You have the ticker down at the bottom. I think for some, you might find this to be a little bit much to, to kind of focus on at first. Like it is a lot of information right up in your face the whole way through. Um, but again, my opinion, it's a hell of a lot better than having to look through things constantly. Again, box scores, you can check any month, you can check any team, any individual game you want to go back and look at the numbers for, uh, you can do just that, which again, should have been in years ago, but thankfully is there now. Uh, you see when you go to an individual player card and look at the stats, you now have the game logs and the split stats to go along with it so you can see how Pedersen's done in recent games with the game logs. I believe pretty much all the stats are there as well. I don't think anything's missing, and if so, I'm sure they can patch that in. I'm only saying that because I haven't gotten to check it myself yet. Um, but yeah, in terms of the split stats as well, last 10, how he does at home, away, you know, in terms of like, oh, what's the relevance to how he does East versus West? You know, some people are like, ah, whatever. But hey, more information, more stats, never a bad thing, uh, especially for those who like that extra bit of immersion of like, oh, shit, how does Pedersen do in terms of playing against rival teams of the Canucks? Especially, too, that factors into the whole grudge match system that they've added in this year as well. But as you can see, that is not the only thing. We finally have award history on player cards. <sighs> Something that should have been in there 20 years ago. I know. I know. I promise I know. But man, um, this year, when it comes to franchise mode, it's a lot of stuff like this. It might not be the big wholesale change like a GM connected would be, but there are just so many. I mean, again, this is a 17, almost 18 minute trailer. There are so many of these little things like this that are just going to add to that a little bit more as opposed to when you get five years into a franchise like, oh, who won the Calder six years ago? You know, it's it's easy to forget because, of course, they haven't had uh, the full list of awards. But, yeah, you get to somebody like Ovi and, of course, he's got the the full trophy cabinet at this stage. Um, I didn't put out a video talking about the ratings because you can only bang your head against the wall so many times <laughs> in terms of ratings and stuff like that. We'll talk about that. We'll see if I end up doing a custom roster this year. I'm probably going to have to, to increase my enjoyment uh, with this game. Unfortunately, contract negotiations are another big change for this year first and foremost you see the free agent list there is an interest meter for your organization and of course it doesn't matter what team you are that player will have different interests um not to say you couldn't still with this example sign brad marsh and you're gonna have to overpay him to do so right as opposed to matt duchene gustav nyquist leon dreisaitl which lol about leon dreisaitl hitting free agency um, but as opposed to that, obviously, the higher the interest, the better it is in terms of your maneuverability when it comes to these negotiations. And that'll bring you to this screen here. And this is essentially the brand new hub that you have when it comes to contract renegotiations. Let's look at all this. First and foremost, the salary, the years, no movement and no trade clauses are in the game. I told you, you might not have a GM connected, but we are finally getting things that we have asked for for a really long time. And in the case of no movements and no trades, if you guys have been around on this channel for a while. You know, I've done series where I've, you know, had to implement them through freaking wheel spins and stuff like that. Now we just outright have them in the game. Um, and again, it can be for uh, essentially any of the number of years, right? Like you can have it. So it's not a full, no movement clause the whole way through. You can have it on a split, no trade, uh, stuff like that. Right. And of course you'll talk about that throughout the video as well. Sometimes of course you see there next to the webcam, there'll be player requests. You can end up making promises as well, uh, to the individual player that you'll look to keep in terms of where they might play and everything like that. So another gigantic set of changes just in terms of, of the interest that you see there player request wants to be on that first power play unit. You can agree to that or not. And of course that can end up changing the interest, but 
Again, no movement clauses, no trade clauses, modified no trade clauses, no movement plus no trade clauses. Um, and along, they'll talk about it, uh, or, you know, Gurren will talk about it in a little bit. And again, trade protection percentage to decide how many teams are on the no trade clause, which is awesome. Um, and of course, in future negotiations, you can go to a player and say, hey, we want you to waive that no movement clause. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. Another a really nice, another really, really nice feature added to the game this year. Just that much more immersion, uh, that much more realism brought into NHL 25 compared to what we had in 24. Now, you can also go this way. Before going to the um, contract offer screen, you can negotiate with said player. They have really worked on establishing and fleshing out this conversation system, which has certainly had some flaws in the past couple of years. But again, you see here negotiating with Sam Bennett and the options that the teams have, inquiring about other offers that are on the table, what he's going to want for the contract, what he wants from the organization standpoint, and this can get you a better idea of not only what the player wants, but if you're successful, all of a sudden his interest is going to go up that much more, and then you might have a better shot at landing that player. So again, instead of just being like, oh, okay, here's this guy on the free agent list, let me just sign him, whatever, there's a lot more give and take to it. Um, some people might not like that there's more effort involved. I mean, you can still get away with just offering contracts and seeing what happens. But if you want that extra level of depth, it is there now at this point in time with NHL 25. But again, you see like the persuasion success and how that's going to, you know, again, benefit the interest that he might have in signing with your team. Um, it's just a really freaking good change, man. That's that's all I can say. It is just a really, really good change. And again, he'll say, hey, here's the you know, amount of years I'm looking at. And you can see as I've clicked throughout the video how much the interest has gone up in you know, uh, Sam Bennett's case and signing with your team. So all in all, um, you can eventually come down to, hey, these are the terms. And then you can go to the negotiating screen. It'll carry those terms over and then you're good to go, right? You can just handle things there instead of having to be like, okay, I offered him this and this. All that information uh, will carry over to that next screen. Um, and again, based off of the conversation, stuff like that, you're like, oh, shit, offer an extra $1.5 I mean, there's a lot of different ways that those conversations can go. Again, based off of where your team is at that given time, what the player's interested in, uh, there's a lot to it. Uh, as well, you can table the contract offer essentially to say like, hey, um, and here, actually, I'll just let it, uh, I'll, I'll let Gurren explain that aspect. So if you think you've negotiated a deal with the player to a sense, but you want to try out and sign another player just in case, you can table the deal. There is a risk to this, obviously. If another team steps in and offers a contract to them, they may get taken and may sign with another team. So it's kind of a risk reward on your aspect of it too, whether or not you're willing to take that chance. So in this case, Sam Bennett accepts your offer because it was so good. So Sweet music, though, you know? Sweet music. But, yeah, it was just easier at, at that point to uh, to let Sam Bennett's uh, negotiation status be explained there um, by Gurn. But we get to this next little part after the fact. And, again, uh, this would be an example of like what the trade screen would look like. You can see and sort by who has a clause, what that clause is, and whether or not... Um, again, you'll have easy negotiations with said players. Again, when you look at the player cards, not only do we have all the same information uh, that we used to have, but again, with any player, you can see who's there. You can see who is on the tradable teams list as well. Uh, again, they have done a great job of giving you essentially all the information that you could possibly want in these circumstances. It's not half-assed baked in of just all right throw it in there to shut him up like no it, it's a thorough thorough job thankfully in regards to how this has been set up and again right here is a good example of asking 
uh, Aaron Ekblad to waive his no trade clause and him saying, nope, not going to happen. And all of a sudden he's not as happy with management, right? Which again can happen. Hey, imagine Jeremy Swayman as a Boston Bruin. Don, give him the money. Go ahead, Don. You traded Lena Allmark before signing Jeremy Swayman, Don. Give him the money. Do it. Anyway, of course, with the conversation system as well, you saw that in that second tab. Uh, not only, of course, can you talk to a head coach and have different kind of responses going on there, you can talk to players and give them goals for the season that, as you can see there, uh, can improve attributes, can improve their potential, can help them develop or improve abilities, X factors, all of that stuff as well. Again, not something you absolutely have to do, but something that if you want that little bit of extra depth, it is there. Um, there's also, of course, you know, some on ice play conversations, the clause and the contract, a lot of different uh, things, of course, you can talk about. You know, in this example, it's, hey, um, in terms of the, the, you know, the teams that you'd be willing to be traded to and stuff like that with no movement clauses. I mean, again, there's just were no trade clauses in that example. Uh, there's just a lot to look at, right? And for, you know, Matthew Kachuk, he had a full no trade clause off of that no movement. And then it's like, oh, sh well, I guess if you had to deal me somewhere, Montreal would be cool. Again, uh, another really nice element that not only adds the, you know, immersion into the mode itself, but makes players feel more like players. I mean, there might end up be, of course, some examples where, a player does something where it's like, LOL, that would never happen. Um, but then again, I feel like LOL, that would never happen moments happen all the time in the NHL, right? I mean, Christ, Steven Stamkos is going to be playing for the Nashville Predators this year. Um, but again, they've done a great job of handling and expanding the conversation system. You can have conversations with any of your active players on the roster to set goals for the season, uh, again, which is great. Not only that, you know, you talked about the goals for the season. Um, there's, and of course, long-term and short-term goals as well, which is really nice. And of course, those will have different impacts on the players should they uh, fail or succeed. Uh, but again, right here, right? The idea of, hey, let's give Kevin Korczynski a challenge that might just result in him going X-Factor. I'll be intrigued to see how powerful this could be. Right, because I think in terms of career modes and player development, some people aren't a big fan of Madden's system and the way that you can kind of level people up very quickly. In FC, it's the same thing in career mode, how quickly in the past, it might not be that way for 25 anymore, fingers crossed, but how quickly you could get people to five-star skills, five-star weak foot and everything like that. It is going to take some proper balancing, and hopefully we are close to, if not already there, um, but case in point here for Korchinski, hey, you get 20 goals, you're getting a boost uh, to your wrist shot and slap shot accuracy. Uh, you also have the ability. I'm not sure if they're going to show it here, uh, but you can see assists plus minus was there. Block shots to try and improve certain other attributes. I'm not sure if it's going to show it. It will show you, of course, what goals you have on a player when you look at their player card as well. I'm hoping he shows an example here. Of okay, he is going to on ice play, which is very, very good. Ha, there we go. That's what I was hoping to see. Uh, you now have the ability to talk to a player and say, Hey, I'm looking at your stats. You're not, or your attributes, you're clearly not a sniper. You're more of a two way forward. We would like you to play like a two way forward. And of course, the player can be like, Nah, I'm not going to do that. In which case, well, having a sniper that plays like a two way, what's the point? Maybe you think about moving on. From that player, you now have a little bit more control over the, especially to the players that you draft, right? Um, and those younger players that are still a bit moldable, you have that ability to say, Hey, we want you to play like this, or Hey, we want you to try playing center, which again is stuff we've been asking for. I get that in the past, we had the ability to just edit players and change them to what we wanted them to be. And then they took that away. So this could be viewed as like, Oh, they're just adding this back in, but with a hurdle. I get that side of the argument. My only issue with this, for example, is if someone's player type or position is just off, like wildly off by default from EA's rosters. But 
we will, of course, have created rosters this year. Uh, so there is that element to it. Uh, but again, it's it's a nice change. I totally get that side of things, though. If someone's like, well, what the hell? We had full control of this earlier, and now it's hidden um, into a conversation system. Totally understand if that's your viewpoint. Um, for me, at least this is there, though. Right. I would rather have this than the total lack of control in you know that we had in NHL 24. So another pretty big positive for me. Anything that gives you more control over player development uh, to me is going to be viewed as a positive thing. You see an example here of talking to the coach as well, being able to set a goal for the season, being able to set a goal for the preseason. Um in terms of, hey, what are we looking to improve amongst the team? Do we want to focus on our conditioning, on our strength, on our skills uh, across a team basis? Do we want to make sure that our power player PK is on point? Do we want to be goalie focused? Like a lot of that is really, really nice. Um, and then again, you get to talk to him about the coaching style, his preferred lines, stuff like that. Uh, there's just a lot there to try and flesh this out, the mode in general, the conversation system to replicate things a little bit better as to as you would actually see it, to have every individual coach, every individual player actually feel like they are their own person, essentially. I don't know if he'll get to it here either. Um, what is worth talking about as well is that there are off-season training plans that are there as well. So heading into an off season, you could go to, um, you know, Dakota Joshua and say, Hey, we want you to improve your skating a little bit, or, Hey, we want you to improve your defense. Try working on that this off season. So especially too, if you have one of those players where it's like, okay, you know, do you want people to be more well-rounded or do you want Brock Besser to just be like, dude, I want you to have the best shot in the league work specifically on that. You could have your entire team just continually work on their skating to improve that. Um, when it comes to community requests, this is a big one. I talked about roster editing, and it's finally back. The ability to move draft picks when roster editing, meaning you are no longer going to have to choose between a custom roster file that you really like and the more up-to-date file that is out there provided by EA with draft pick movement, this is gigantic. Unfortunately, here's here's probably the bigger downside for me, even above like a GM connected. Uh, roster sharing is not cross-platform this year. Um, I do know, and people will be like, oh, whatever, they could have gotten it. I do know that it's on the list, and it's high up on the list of things that they are looking to do. I have talked about it in the past when it comes to this game. And it's developmental cycle because, again, I have been able to see kind of firsthand how they do things. Essentially, it is this. We have a team this big. You know, Madden or freaking FC will have teams that big. We have a team this big. We have this much time to add in this much that we want to get to and that people want us to get to. So every year, it's having to pick and choose what are we going to address? And you can agree or disagree with what they choose to focus on. Lord knows I do. Lord knows I do. Okay. Um, but at the end of the day, that is kind of the approach. And where uh, the you know cross-plat roster sharing will be, um, it can be high up on the list right now, especially in regards to like franchise mode stuff. As I understand it, it is high up on the list. But how does that compare to what they want to do for gameplay, for World of Shell, for Ultimate Team? be a pro whatever else i mean granted be a pro fans are uh you know the meme of the skeleton at the bottom of the pool that's kind of be a pro fans for this year especially um but again being able to move draft picks is a big big change they've also changed some stuff in regards uh to the draft and just you know the the generated prospects a lot of you know kind of tweaks that they do every year in regards to you know, the AI balancing the teams and stuff like that and, and drafting and a lot of, you know, changes that you would expect. But again, big things this year, an expanded conversation system, no trades, no movements. I mean, there was a lot here. It is a 17 minute video for a reason. Um, and for me, 
yeah, I'm I'm excited, right? Like NHL 24 was a bit of a rough year. Uh, it's probably my least played NHL ever, maybe. Um, but at the end of the day, I do think things have improved for this game. Is it, is it going to have everything that people have ever wanted? No, it's not. Is it better? Yes. Is it much better? In my opinion, yes. Uh, but we'll see if that age is well, right? Because you never know. The game could come out at launch and all of a sudden it's like, oh, shit, we didn't see this. We didn't see that. And then it takes them freaking two months to get things uh, back into order. But again, um, in terms of, hey, live soon. Sweet. Apparently, I am going live on Twitch soon. In fairness, I think that was from a VOD. But anyway, um, yeah, twitch.tv forward slash 2 24 I'll be there all the time. And here, I'll even go over the screen where there's no active chat right now because I'm not actually streaming. But at the end of the day, I think it is a much better game in terms of pre-ordering. Again, if you're not a big Ultimate Team player or something like that, you probably don't need to. It can wait until October 4th. Uh, but then again, if you are excited enough for franchise mode, maybe not the worst year in the world to pre-order. Although, again, EA's provided roster will be relatively out of date, as it always is when the game first comes out. And obviously, there won't be any big uh, you know, roster-created files or community files or anything like that for the first little bit. But that is it. A big year for franchise mode. You could argue uh, franchise is uh, eating the best out of any of the communities right now in regards to the NHL community and the more in-depth sides of the game. Let me know what you think. Is it enough to have you excited for franchise mode this year? I'm intrigued to know. Like I said, it's a lot of smaller things, but man, those really do add up quickly. And um, again... It's. I think it's impossible to say it's not better than it was last year and by a significant amount. With that, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I will see you at some point, probably. It's going to be a very, very busy end of the year.